All right, Simon, do the intro. What's up, Street Talks? This is Simon on the Eric Kim Photography Blog. So, um, <laughs> Simon has been here the first uh, day in Osaka shooting the streets. So, how's shooting the streets of Osaka? Um, it's, it's interesting, you know, it's, it's kind of extremes. Like, you can walk some of the streets in Osaka and it's so busy. It's really, really crowded and it's kind of quite confined conditions. And then you can turn a corner, walk two streets, and the streets are deserted and it's really quiet. So, it's, yeah, changes up a lot. Well, this cool thing is that, like, I love going to, so you're from London, and I love London and shooting street photography there. How does shooting street photography in Osaka compare to London? Um, that's a good question, and to be honest, I'm not entirely sure yet. It's, um, I think I'm still in that phase of being in a new city and, and everything's different, and um, I don't know, trying not to get caught up in, in some of the things which are just everywhere here like you know the the lanterns which are just hanging everywhere or signs written in Japanese which as a foreigner coming in it's all new it looks exciting it's a lot of colors um, so yeah just trying to shoot a little bit today and then kind of move past that initial thing of everything being new yeah well one thing that you mentioned yesterday over dinner which was really cool is that the first time you've been to Japan it's so exciting for you because nothing is familiar like even all the lettering it's none of its Roman characters so it's yeah. all like to me, like even when I see Japanese, I don't know how to read Japanese mm -hmm. either. It almost looks like foreign symbols, mm -hmm. which photographically actually looks more interesting rather than if we're shooting in London, you, you already know what all the signs say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one question I had. So um, tell tell YouTube's what are you shooting with? I'm shooting with the XT2 here and the 23 mil or full frame 35 mil lens. Um, yeah, I love it. I had it for about two years now, and I think the 35 mil lens is is my favorite. I've got the 28 and the 50, um, but I think this is a nice balance between somewhat wide, but not um, too close. So what are the good things for the X-T2 for street photography? Because, you know, I think uh, a lot of people are like, oh, should I get the X new Fuji X100F or should I get the X-T2 or even should I get like a Ricoh GR version 2? So what was your purchasing decision and how is it like for street photography? Um, I think it's really great for, for street photography. I've, I've shot on a Canon, um, what was it? one of the EOS 450D, I think, um, which was bigger than this. I've shot on the Ricoh GR as well. And I think for me, I really like the the X-T2. I mm -hmm. think one of my favorite things about it is just having the, the kind of manual dials for ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Um, generally, I'll kind of shoot in either, what is it, TV mode or AV mode equivalent. Um, so having either setting the aperture and shutter speed, um, but leaving ISO and automatic, so partially auto mode. But I think just being able to get to these and control shutter speed and aperture easily was a was a big thing for me with the camera. And it looks cool as well. It looks kind of retro. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think one of the things for me with the the XT2 was just being able to change the lens. So I think I you know I like to experiment. I like to shoot other things as well. And I think having the the Ricoh GR for a while. Kind of, I felt sometimes that I wanted to try shooting at 50 mil, or I wanted to try shooting at 35 mil. Um, so being able to swap out the lenses and have options in the future, if I suddenly decide, I don't know, I want to do macro photography or landscape photography or, or whatever. Um, yeah, having that option was a good thing for me on this as well. How heavy is the XT2? Um, I don't actually find it too heavy. Um, I actually have back and neck issues, and walking around with the cannon around my neck all day did actually kind of give me a bit of neck pain. But I haven't found the XT2 too, too bad. Um, it's yeah, obviously a bit heavier than the the GR, but it's it's a good weight for me, I think. Hmm. So, um, what practical travel street photography tips would you give people that you've been out shooting and you're crazy jet lagged yeah. and <laughs> like how do you even find motivation to shoot and yeah, like what is what is shooting like abroad? Um, I th I love shooting abroad. I think for me, it's very easy when I'm in London. For everything just to seem mundane and you know you've seen it a hundred times before and just being in a, a new country everything is new so I think it's you f really feel inspired and I think one of the things even if you are kind of stuck with shooting is that actually finding something to motivate yourself or to get out and once you start pressing the shutter it's very easy then to keep shooting and I think being somewhere new gives you that motivation so you know I got in I had three hours sleep on the way here I had three hours sleep the first night I got here but then I just couldn't sleep I couldn't wait to get out and get shooting nice excited to see your shots this week cool peace out peace out